morning children welcome back with the next new session so in this session we are going to discuss the question and answers from the 6th standard textbook lesson of 8 kingdoms and empires so uh, in the previous sessions we have discussed about the lesson in detail about the mauryan empire about the Gup i mean the mauryan dynasty the gupta dynasty as well as the south indian dynasties and in the south indian dynasties we have discussed about the satvahanas the ikshuvakas the pallavas and the chalukyas so the lesson was all about these these things only the these dynasties only now in this session we are going to discuss briefly about the question and answers part and uh, i'm going to explain you the meaning of the question as well okay so from this lesson i can see there are 10 question and answers given so i'll be reading these question and answers one by one okay so here comes the first question after the war of kalinga the king ashoka decided not to fight any wars do you think this type of decision promotes world peace and how okay as in the lesson i told what has happened with the ashoka what did he see what has happened so after the war he has seen that many of people many people have lost their life many people uh, like have uh, many people have died on the war there then uh, many people have lost their houses many people were injured so after seeing all these things he decided uh, he wanted to follow the peace without having any more violence because he understood that violence will not give you any benefit so he decided not to go towards the violence and and there itself he followed the concept of dharma that is dhamma i told dhamma in prakrit language so uh, in the buddhism he has uh, he has followed the concept of dhamma and and hence he has uh, stopped the path of non violence and chosen the path uh, like stopped the path of violence and then he has chosen the path of non violence okay and he also wanted that he his next upcoming generations also should not have any kind of wars so all these things he has written in an inscription there so what is inscription i told you already okay inscriptions are nothing but the written part is known as inscription okay so all these things were written and uh, so that the next upcoming generation of his kingdom will uh, know that uh, there was a, a war that has happened and many people have lost their life so we also should not choose the path of violence okay so this was all about this question number 1 So question number 2 explain the relevance of Ashoka's dhamma today appreciate the greatness of Ashoka okay so they are asking uh, what did uh, like Ashoka's dharma concept is still is still followed in these days or not if it is yes you have to answer it okay Ex and also appreciate the greatness of Ashoka okay now Ashoka dhamma is a code of conduct meant for the welfare of the people and the empire Ashoka felt that just a father tries to uh, teach his children he also had a duty to instruct his subjects okay so uh, so he thought that he should explain or he should convey the message of the like convey the importance or convey what is good like uh, for example if it, if the path of violence he, he understood it is not correct so he understood the uh, the concept of this dharma as that means love human and uh, love human kind love animals respect your elders we have all discussed you know so all these things have to be inculcated among the children inculcated among the society as well so that people will stop going through the violence and uh, goes to the non violence okay then it is relevant today because it wants to promote the peace in the society dominated by violence so he he also wanted that peace should always win over the violence okay next third point it is relevant today because it promotes moral principle in the society so it is why it is related because it gives a moral principle to the people who are living in the society it is relevant today because it asked the people not to criticize to other religions and follow the principles of religious tolerance so it also why it is relevant of ashoka's dharma is because people should not criticize or uh, say any kind of bad uh, to other religions also okay then it is also relevant today because it asked people to work for the welfare of the mankind all the government are following this principle today so whatever the government is working today uh, they are looking after the welfare of the people because whatever the work is done by the government ultimately or finally it has to be giving some kind or other benefit to the people okay then finally ashoka's greatness lies in the fact that he abandoned was after winning a great war so finally ashoka's uh, uh, greatness where did he find is he found that uh, the concept of dhamma he has followed the uh, that moment itself when he has 
won in the battle and then uh, then at uh, that time he had decided that no from this day we should stop all the wars and from here we have to follow the path of peace okay then third question compare compare and contrast the public works undertaken during ashoka's period with those of today so we have to compare and contrast so compare means the uh, what is this comparing that means having difference contrast means what are the similarities okay similarities and differences okay so they are asking what are the similarities and differences in the public work undertaken during ashoka's time and present today okay so first here comparison that means difference both ashoka and the present day both ashoka and present day government achieved political unification in the country both ashoka and the present government provided goods good uh, good roads and transport facilities and established hospitals and provide medical care for the people and animals okay then contrast so what is different here first is comparison what is same here they have compared and then the contrast ashoka's establishment main roads between east west uh, east west of india and north south of india so how did he plan the roads are uh, so how like the main roads or the the highways or whatever it should be on the east west or north south directions of india so whereas in the nowadays the government is establishing a grid of national highways and state highways in our country itself that means not um, like they should be connection with the highways of every state okay that means every state has the connections with other states isn't it so in the present day government is preparing or um, or making the roads which connects every state okay rather than in one particular direction on every direction there are roads which are connecting every state okay next point when compared with the public works undertaken by the ashoka the public works of modern government are many yes um, ashoka did not follow all the many um, all the welfare but where like he has only focused on welfare but the government in present day is focusing more and more of whatever the challenges of whatever the problems are coming every single day so they are taking it as challenge and overcoming the problem okay then besides the public work uh, sorry ashoka established hospitals for the poor as well as animals but the present government also doing the same but on the large scale yes same as how ashoka has started the hospitals for the poor as well as for the animals same as our government is also doing in the same way but in the large scale large scale means what in many hospitals that means not one or two hospitals ashoka maybe he has started one or two hospitals but now in the present day government every city or every village every state has a government hospitals isn't it then Besides public works, the government of today are doing a number of welfare activities such as pensions, scholarships, free medical care, free distribution of uh, food grains, clothes, etc. So these are the services which are provided by the government in the present days. Okay, then fourth question: Ashoka used his army to serve the people instead of war. What relief operations? does the present indian army participate other than war today ashoka used his um, army to serve the people instead of war so usually armies or the soldiers are used in the wars isn't it but ashoka did not use them in the wars he used his soldiers for the uh, like uh, providing service for the people okay what relief operations does the present indian army participate other than war so what they are asking is what in the present day so what is happening in the present day how our army soldiers are doing or how our army soldiers are working today we have to uh, give the answer now the main duty of indian army is to protect the boundaries of the country yes it is the main uh, the duty of an army is to uh, just to um, protect the boundaries of the country so that no other enemy countries come or enter into our country isn't it their first duty second point in times of emergency the indian army is participating in various uh, emergency activities so one, whenever it is an emergency for example if anywhere there are some floods there are tsunamis there are earthquakes so wherever such situations are happening what is happening the first people who attend there are the army people or the soldier the soldiers who come and help them isn't it so who come and rescue the place rescuing means what helping the people who are already in in trouble in the Uh, situation so they start helping them okay then finally the indian army participates in relief rescue and rehabilitations of the victims of the emergence like floods cyclones earthquakes fire accidents 
train accidents and other natural calamities so just now i've told with an examples that these people come forward to serve these kind of things like providing services who are uh, who are uh, struck in the problem of floods or um, maybe some earthquakes or tsunamis or accidents or whatever has happened natural or natural calamities what is natural calamities floods and all are known as natural calamities or tsunamis or earthquake which occurs naturally that means by the nature it occurs it is known as natural calamities for all these situations army people are the first people who come to rescue rescue means to just serve the people that means to protect them from the dangered place okay then this is about the fourth question fifth question what is the contribution of the guptas in the fields of literature and architecture literature art and architecture so what uh, what did the gupta dynasty what did they do for the uh, for the art literature and architecture let us see the gupta period was famous for the books and development in literature so they are famous for their books as well as the literature second point they were nine uh, great scholars in the court of chandragupta too they were called navaratnas the famous poet kalidasa was started was stated as one of one among them so kalidasa as in the court of chandragupta too they were uh, nine famous scholars so they are known as navaratnas so among them kalidasa the famous poet was one among from his court of chandragupta too then the navaratnas are amar simha dhanavantari harisena kalidasa vithala bhatta kaha panaka sanaku varaha mihira and varauchi vararuchi so these are the nine people who are the scholars in the court of Ch chandragupta too next fourth point the gupta period was famous for the marvelous rocket ca uh, caves some of the painting and sculptures of ajanta and ellora caves are the finest examples of this period so these are some of the monuments or some of the caves which were built by the people of gupta dynasty okay then sixth question why do we call the gupta period as a golden age in indian history why do we call the gupta age gupta dynasty's period as a golden age first india witnessed great inventions and discoveries in the science astronomy mathematics and literature during this period yes we have discussed in the lesson about uh, during the gupta period there are great scholars have come people who have a lot of knowledge in medicine people have a lot of knowledge in astronomy okay in science in mathematics and all so so the gupta period is called the uh, golden age of indian history okay next seventh question how did guptas contribute in the fields of medicine and metal technology okay so that means how did they provide services like how did they improve more and more in uh, math like medicine and the metal technology okay first point in the medicine okay medicine charaka and sushrata were the great persons who have who have good medical knowledge during gupta period sushrata was the first indian doctor who carried out plastic surgery to the damaged nose so in the lesson all these things we have already discussed children doctors of gupta uh, doctors of gupta period could set broken bones and perform operations indian doctors used herbs in treating illness they believed that it was important to remove the root cause of the disease rather than disease itself charaka composed charaka samhita this was the basic text of ayurveda medicine he was renowned physician of that period okay so what did what they say is uh, charaka and sushrata are the first two indian doctors so whereas sushrata was the person who has first performed the plastic surgery that that two on the damaged nose so they they have even uh, uh, done the treatment for the broken bones okay next uh, that means fixing of the broken bones next thing is uh, they have all they understood that disease they gave such a treatment that disease cannot be just removed temporarily it has to be removed permanently from the people why that the disease what is the root cause of the disease that means what is the main cause of the disease so they, it has to be taken off so these are the things what the medicine has developed during the time of gupta okay gupta dynasty then metal technology the scientists of the gupta period were experts of metallurgy they made iron and steel tools and weapons they 
minted sophisticated gold coins okay metallurgy means what nothing but is it's about combination or melting of different metals is a concept known as metallurgy you will learn all this metallurgy concept in your higher studies okay then what this gupta people do is they have combined or they have used they have melted the different metals okay iron or steel and all these things they have melted and they have made the weapons which are used by the people of gupta dynasties okay then and they have also minted minted means what minted means printed they have printed the gold coins sophisticated that means high quality or high rich in like uh, respected gold coins were printed during the time of gupta and that to the gold ones okay then eighth question what was the contribution of pallavas to architecture what was the contribution to the pallavas to architecture see children in the last class we have discussed about the mahendra one style, mahendra style isn't it we have spoken about uh, Mal mamala style we have spoken about rajasimha style isn't it so yeah, people uh, this uh, person who was uh, mahendra one his style is of dravidian style that means present today south indian temples how it is he has built uh, the temples in that way then comes to Mamala style that means it is by Narasimha one son of Mahendra one okay Mahendra one son Mahendra one son is Narasimha one so he is also known as Mamala by the people of their dynasty so that is the reason why so the style or whatever the way he has uh, the way he has uh, used is known as Mamala style so where he has used the Rathas so yesterday like the last class I have shown you the pictures of that as well okay so the pancha pandava rathas you remember the lesson what i have said okay then finally the raja simha the person who has used soft sand stones and made the uh, made the sculptures on the walls or on the caves isn't it so this was about the architecture that the pallava has contributed then ninth question locate the following places on the outline map of india so you have to just locate the places the places are patliputra ujjaini the river Narmada, Kanchi, Mahabalipuram and Dhanya Kataka. So these are the places you have to mark on the uh, on the map of A India. Okay. So you have to do the same like this. Okay. Then you have to take a uh, world map like, like uh, India map, outline map of India and you have to just mark or locate the places and you have, you have to fix this map to the CW itself. Okay. Then the last question, 10th question. Who am I? So you have to guess who these are. Okay. I am in lion capital of Ashoka. I am the center of our national flag. Who am I? Who is he? Okay, it is Veel or Dharma Chakra. So in the national flag also we see as well as the uh, in our national emblem also we see it. Isn't it then? Second one. I belong to Gupta dynasty. I defeated all the kings in India. Who am I? He is Samudra Gupta. Okay, then. I am the capital of Satavahana Empire. I am located on the banks of river Krishna. Who am I? It is Dhanyakataka in Amravati. Then, fifth, uh, last one. I completed the rock cut temples of Mahabalipuram. I am the son of Mahendravan. Who am I? Narasimha. Okay. So, these are the 10 question and answers from the lesson number 8 of 6th class Kingdoms and Empires. I hope you have all understood these question and answers very well. You have to write them one by one properly. And for any more doubts and queries, please ask us immediately. We will meet up in the next upcoming class with a fresh new lesson. Until then, bye children. Thank you. Have a nice day.